How's it going guys? I'm Theo Joe and it's about that time of the year again where we got a new major Android update. This time we're getting Android 11. So we're going to go over what I think are the best improvements and new features. Obviously some of the big major ones you might have heard of as well as some more minor ones that you might not hear of too often and even some more hidden features. So let's just get into it. One really cool new feature is notification history. So you'll be able to see a history of notifications even if you close them out. So to enable this you swipe down from the top to bring down the shelf and then at the bottom left click manage and then where it says notification history enable that and from now on every time you get a notification it'll show up here it'll be sorted by date so this is really good if you've ever been in the situation where you accidentally swiped away a notification too quickly and you didn't read what it said or maybe you saw a notification pop up but then it immediately went away or something like that you know maybe if someone liked your Instagram accidentally and you're like oh who did that now you can go back and see what it was this ability to see notification history was technically still in older versions but it was a really convoluted way you had to go into this weird settings app that wasn't on by default but now it's just really easy and now you can use it next up Android has a built-in screen recorder finally it's a very simple one just like on iOS where there's not really many settings in terms of bitrate or anything like that but to enable this all you have to do is add it to the quick settings menu so if you don't know how to do that you swipe down from the top to bring down the quick settings menu then click the little pen icon thing and then look for where it has the screen recording new icon and then just drag that up into your normal quick settings menu and then you can use it whenever you want. When you do go to record, you do have a couple basic options. One is to show the touches. So you touch the screen, it'll show that in recording. And also you have the option to enable or disable sound in the recording, whether that's from the microphone, the system audio, or both. Then when you actually start the recording, it'll show a little countdown of a few seconds at the top. It'll just start the recording and then you can swipe down and stop it from the notification panel. All right, next feature is really cool. It is smart home controls right from the power menu. So now if you hold down the power button for a couple seconds, it'll not only bring up the power controls at the top, like power off the phone or whatever, and this may look slightly different depending on your phone's manufacturer. Anyway, lower down, you'll see home controls and you can add controls edit controls. So if you have certain smart devices like lights or whatever for different rooms, you can add these in here and control them by simply tapping on it to turn it on and off. Or if it's a light, for example, or it has more controls available, you can long press into it. And then that'll give you the option for lights to change the color, the brightness, that sort of thing right in here. And it seems like it's basically just taking any devices that are integrated into your Google Assistant. So if you don't see something in there, it probably needs to be added in there. And then also, of course, you're able to choose which actual controls show up in this menu by hitting edit controls or add controls, and you can choose whatever ones you want to be in there. All right, now this next one is one that Google is actually focused on, but it's a little bit more subtle. Now, when you swipe down to show notifications, if you have several of them, they'll be kind of grouped together. And one of the groups is conversations. So now if you have several apps like messages or maybe Telegram or Twitter or something like that where you're getting messages from the app, those notifications apparently now will show up in this conversations group basically at the top of the notifications window. So you'll know that they're all now kind of grouped together and any other notifications will be grouped below that. So basically, I guess the idea is to just make sure that more priority notifications where people are trying to actually talk to you are apparently going to be showing closer to the top now. And I believe they also used some AI to try and determine which other notifications are also important and show those at the top of other groupings, stuff like that. All right, now a new privacy feature concerning permissions is also really cool. And now when an app asks you for permission, such as for example, with location, you'll now have the option to give it permission only this time. So effectively it's a one-time permission and then that will maintain the ask every time setting. If you go to look in the permission settings for that app, it'll say ask every time. So that way, if you're worried about an app having access in the background all the time, but you only use the app occasionally, this is a really great option. Also having to do with this, I believe by default, Android will now make it so if you don't use a certain app for several months, it will actually reset the permissions. So you can actually enable or disable this by long pressing on an app, going to app info, then permissions, and then you'll see a new setting, remove permissions if app isn't used. I don't know if this applies to all permissions or just location, but you can enable or disable this. And I think in most cases it's enabled by default. So again, this is probably just to keep apps from using background permissions and stuff. If you almost never use it and you completely forgot it's installed, it's not gonna have a million different random apps you don't use 
getting all that stuff in the background. Here's a cool feature for those of you who are using wireless charging. Now, if you put your phone on the charging dock and it's not perfectly lined up, so it's not really charging well, it will actually give you a notice. It'll say realign phone to charge wirelessly. And this I believe is only on certain devices. So obviously it's gonna have to support wireless charging and perhaps the manufacturer has to support it. But now if you have trouble getting your phone on the thing centered correctly, this should make it a little bit easier. All right, so now we have a huge, major, possibly the biggest update in all of the video that we're gonna talk about. It is the new emojis and specifically the return of the king, the best turtle emoji in existence has returned in Android 11. So you may remember several versions of Android Go, they had this turtle. It was replaced by this really hideous turtle and now they're bringing it back, I guess by popular demand, along with some other emojis that I think are superior as well that used to be in there. For example, the fox emoji, the frog emoji, the cat emoji was changed a little bit. So I think these are all improvements. Of course, with Android 11, you're also getting completely new emojis that are part of the Unicode 13 new standard. So new emojis come out every year. So basically you're getting the pinched finger emoji, the Italian spaghetti emoji, for example. Another one is the smiling with tear emoji. So it's kind of like a proud, happy, sad emoji or whatever. Another one is the disguised face. So it has the mustache, the glasses and all that. I did make another video going a little bit more in depth in this. If you want to click that, I'll just have it pop out right there if I remember. Also, for those of you who use dark theme, you can now schedule dark theme to start at a certain time or automatically at sunset. So to do this, you go to settings and then display dark theme and then schedule. And again, you can set custom time for when it will switch from light to dark theme or just have it automatically go by sunset. All right, now let's get into some more hidden features that are a little bit smaller, but I definitely think are still worth mentioning. First of all, there is of course a new Android 11 Easter egg to access this. You go to settings and then about phone and then click on Android version. And then again, in the next menu, click Android version again, tap this a few times, and this will bring up a basic volume dial. This is kind of like the logo of Android 11. And if you try to max it out a few times, you'll now see that the dial goes up to 11. This is basically a reference to the movie Spinal Tap where it's the meme where uh, this one goes to 11, turning it up past max. You can know the whole thing. But there's actually another part to this Easter egg because after you turn it up to 11, you'll now see basically a little cat emoji pop up near the bottom of the screen. And this shows you that the second part of the Easter egg has been activated. So now what you can do is go back to that home control menu that I showed you before by holding down the power button and then go to see other apps and then enable cat controls. And here you toggle all of these on. And then basically if you fill the water bubbler and then fill the bowl and then play with the toy a few times by just tapping it, you'll see a message that says cat attracted. And then if you put the phone down for a few minutes, not using it after a little while, you'll see a new notification that you got a new cat to collect. So this is basically just kind of a cool thing and you can see all the cats you've collected and then rename them and stuff. And it'll say cat number, whatever, they'll all be different. And then to get more, you go back into the cat controls menu and then fill up the bowl and stuff like that. And it's just kind of a cool little thing. Next up, there's a couple features in the developer options we can talk about. If you don't know how to de enable developer options, you basically just go in the settings, tap on the build number thing a few times, and then that'll enable it. And then there will be a new developer options thing in the settings window. One of these settings is under networking and it's called enable Gabeldorsch. And basically this is a weird name, I think it's German, for a new Bluetooth stack, so-called. Basically just kind of a platform, I guess you could say, for Bluetooth. And possibly because this is an improved stack for Bluetooth, if you enable this, then it will improve Bluetooth connectivity potentially. I believe it's still in the developer options because they're probably still working on it before it's ready for prime time, maybe in a future update. But if you have been having trouble with Bluetooth connectivity, you can try enabling this and see if it maybe improves that. Or if you enable it and then start getting problems, you can just disable it again. Another new cool toggle in here is under debugging and it's show refresh rate. And this basically just shows you whatever refresh rate the phone is using, either 60 or 90 if your phone is capable of that or maybe even higher in whatever app you're using. I don't believe this actually shows the actual frame rate. So for example, if you're playing a game and it's really graphics intensive and you're not getting a lot of frames, I don't think this will tell you that frame rate, just what the screen is trying to refresh at as a maximum, if that makes sense. But still, this is a good way to know if your phone supports maybe 120 Hertz or something like that. You can tell whether certain apps are actually taking advantage of that or not. Here's a really cool networking feature. If you go to settings, 
network and internet, and hotspot and tethering, you'll now see there's a new option for ethernet tethering. And basically this allows you to connect any devices. They might not be able to use Wi-Fi for whatever reason, or you'd rather use an ethernet cable to plug into another device to tether to your phone's internet connection. You can now do that. You just need an ethernet cable and a USB to ethernet adapter. So it's just cool to know that you can do that now. And then finally, for those of you who happen to use screen protectors or just have trouble, I don't know, tapping stuff in general, there's a new option to increase touch sensitivity, which can be found in settings display and then increase touch sensitivity. It does specifically mention this is probably gonna be used if you have a screen protector that maybe reduces the sensitivity, you have trouble tapping on stuff, you can enable this. So those are the features I think are just most significant. If I missed any big ones, let me know down in the comments and also check down there in case someone mentioned one that I did miss. If you wanna keep watching, the next video I would recommend is one where I was talking about the new iOS 14 features. So if you're curious what the iOS side of things is getting, you can just click on that video right there. So thanks so much for watching guys and I'll see you in the next video.